for Sozo Labs. Um, so, um, uh, Sozo Labs is an exciting um, uh, VR uh, company. Uh, they specialize in, um, you know, 3D uh, artistry and sort of game design. And I'd like to introduce you guys to Gary. Um, so, Gary is a well-rounded 3D artist, and he specializes actually in the creation of like interactive objects and animations, um, you know, um, and in extended reality. So, I mean, we all know about like the metaverse and stuff like that. These are actually people who are working on the technology for that. Um, so just a bit about Gary, he's, he enjoys gaming um, and you know, he's um, looking forward to like just bringing like gaming concepts and all of these things to a wider audience. And um, uh, Gary's expertise lies in tackling complex technical challenges, which he views as opportunities to sort of craft his artistry um, around interactive and engaging virtual environments. So, you know, he's a very keen eye for detail. I mean, you can see the absolutely beautiful posters that they have today. And um, we're very excited to hear what you have to say, Gary. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. There you go. Hey, everyone. Oh, that's yeah, a little bit louder than I expected. Um, I've got my uh, associate here, Jacques, as well. Um, he'll introduce himself shortly. Um, so as, as you probably heard from, from some of the other speakers, we're obviously looking at like intern, internship opportunities, uh, a little bit of a, and we're gonna give you a little bit of a showcase of, of what we do, uh, what we sort of uh, focus on, specialize in, et cetera. Um, Jacques, if you wanna take over? Uh, sure. <laughs> Tiny microphone for hands. Um, hi, I'm Jacques, Jacques Boerter. Uh, this is Gary Boerter. No, we are not related, just Incredible coincidence. I am what you would call a software engineer at Sosa Labs. Uh, I specialize in just creating the experiences. So we utilize something called the Unity 3D Engine. Some of you might have heard some of the drama that we had to experience recently with the licensing agreements. It's, I hope that's behind us. Um, and Gary would be our 3D artist extraordinaire. <laughs> Um, so when you think VR, this is what most people think, Just slice some little blocks in pieces with little heads, headset strap on your head. Um, unfortunately, not really what the industry seems to think about. Um, turns out that uh, VR is being used a bit more in the professionals, professional sense, pardon me. Uh, about 75% of the Forbes top 500 have been using VR and AR, or what we would like to call the extended reality, or XR, in their day-to-day -day business or training. Um, Gary will give us some information on the uptake on that, but it's safe to say that it's been a growing um, field in more than just the entertainment industry. Yeah, so basically, um, VR compared to your more traditional learning methods, um, a lot of you would be going through, uh, learning from textbooks, learning through lecturers. Um, it's been proven that it can be uh, four, up to four times more effective and faster. Um, so that means we put you in a headset, we teach you everything because it's visual, because you're interacting with it, because you're in control of the journey. Um, it, it has a bit more of retention. You can remember, you can repeat, um, you can replicate kind of thing. Um, it's fast coming up in, as Jacques said, in a lot of the like big, big companies um, in various places, uh, things like soft skills. So that's me and you talking in a room, uh, maybe uh, I'm selling you a product, maybe I need to read your body language, um, safety simulations as well, maybe you're dealing with something that is incredibly dangerous, incredibly expensive. If we put you today having no knowledge, you might break it, might hurt yourself, um, so that's the, the, the sort of the three main, um, main uses. Uh, if you go to the next slide there, Jacques. Yeah, so I did touch, ooh, do not touch the fluffy bits. Um, turns out, um, so what we are as Sosa Labs, we touched on it a bit in the beginning, but we are a company specializing in the gamification, utilizing the XR, extended reality platform, as our um, field. Um, this means that a client comes to us with a problem, say for example, we need, they need to be able to train their people to replace a wheel on a semi-truck, and they've had, recently had a bunch of in, um, injuries 
with the new people. So we go, okay, here's a solution that we can provide. You can have them train in a safe environment, and we go from there. Um, here are some examples of the. Right. Here are some examples of what we consider our company values. So we we, we take the the sort of the problems that our clients have, and we start applying our four core values at Sozo. Um, so first of all, our humanness. So something that's very important to us is that we need to understand that everybody is a human. We need to understand that people have problems. We need to understand that problems need to be approached with, with empathy, with sympathy, um, all, of those, all of those sorts of things. We need to have commitment to courage. So this is basically, um, if you have a problem, you need to be able to speak up without getting harshly judged. Um, we need to be able to create the light. Uh, this, is, this is one of my personal favorites. Um, so this is all of, the, all of the sort of the visuals, making sure that you can give a little bit extra as often as you can to make uh, someone basically smile and go, oh wow, I really like that. Um, and then finally, being an explorer. Uh, so we don't settle for, this is the way it's always been done. That is dangerous for us. We say, how can we do it better? Uh, maybe there are different ways. Maybe there's some of you out there that also have incredible ideas on ways to um, engage and bring virtual reality to others. We'd, lo we'd love to hear. Um, we will be outside uh, later. Um, I think yeah, here it's basically some, some of the things I said, uh, a little bit more in depth. Um, we want to be at the forefront of the cut cutting edge technology, create the exciting and engaging engaging experience, uh, grow your skill sets, um, be involved in tons of exciting projects. That's, that's sort of some of the things that, that you could look forward to if you, if you do come and join us. Uh, yeah, the internship. Um, so briefly on the internship, I'll pass to Jacques. We've got mostly development roles um, that, that we are looking to, to intern for, and I think that's mostly what you guys do. Um, we do have internships available for, I think it was June next year. Uh, our December ones are, are pretty pretty full at the moment, um, but if you, if you if you do come in and sort of speak to us, we can, we can give you more of that. Um, it's basically dealing with, with uh, Unity. Um, I think maybe Jacques would be, would be better, better equipped. I think he, <laughs> he, he went through some of the more training. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just to give you a quick rundown of if you were interested into the internship program, what it would entail. Um, it's just some uh, sneaky snapshots of the previous years. It, essentially what we do is we take you through the entire process. We teach you our tech stack, we teach you time and project management, and if our memory serves, about a three, three to four week program. Um, in which it ends up with a something called a game jam. A lot of you might have already heard of this term, but it's essentially just creates a full game experience in the Unity game engine in a the allocated time. Um, however, this is most of the process is guided up until that last week, and then we go. We are available for questions, but let's see what you've learned. Let's see how you think. And then we go from there. We actually have had a few people, and I think we have one or two people sitting in the crowd of today that have been there. And it's from, unless they've been lying, it's been a good experience. Um, so yeah, here's a bit of a, um, a, some of the work we've done. Uh, these are products that have now officially seen the light of day. We all know that some projects are either under such NDAs that they will never see the light of day for public, um, however, these are some of those that we can talk about. Okay. Um, so this is work active. Um, some of you might have seen these machines at the gyms, these power plates. They stand and vibrate. Um, not the best marketing tool to describe it like that, but what we did is we created a companion app with um, a company called Britia Work Active, and what they do is they go to corporations, big companies, and be where they have some instances where all of these, a lot of the jobs you just sit and you're stationary and they realize that it's cheaper to have the employees be a bit healthy, have them stand up, do some physical activities, but they kind of needed to gamify it. And that's kind of where we swooped in was like, okay, cool. We understand the gamification of problems. Let's create it. This was a very interesting learning opportunity where we had to 
I think that this is revision three of every time we came to an end and we were like, this is good, but we can do better. And this particular client was awesome, where they allowed us, we're like, yes, we like what you did, but you say you can do better, let's do better. So every time, it just increased in complexity and our entire team skill set just exploded on this project. Um, then in range, this one's my personal favorite. Um, just give you a short description. It uses the same radar tech that we have on the square kilometer array to track um, multiple balls. I think something silly like 5,000 golf balls at once. Track them back to the Bay of Origin and give a data package. Now that turns out not everyone is a fan of a good Excel spreadsheet, Pitsy. So what we do is we take that data and we um, gamify, vi visualize it, do a digital twin of the um, site that they're currently playing at and do uh, skill challenges. Um, it turns out golfers like to know that they're shanking to the left so they can then correct. It's just very useful for training and entertainment. And then last but not least would be Transfer VR. Um, we worked as a contractor for them. Uh, they have this platform where they go and go to bigger corporations and be like, okay, we hear you have issues with training your people so efficiently, so here's a module on bleeding the brakes on a Cessna airplane. Uh, it turns out someone needs to make those experiences and so we they approached us and we were like, yeah, we can help out. That's, that's something that we're good at. So this is um, more of the technical training, hard skill um, area of expertise that we tend to find ourselves in recently. Um, yes, yeah, so if you are interested in um, partaking in our internships, this email address, Corin at Soza Labs, she is our head honcho, our equivalent of what we would call an HR, which we don't have, but we call her, she's the office mom. <laughs> so yeah, contact her. Um, unfortunately, our December slot is full for internships. However, if you have any questions, queries, I'll even send in your CV. That email address, that's your friend. Yeah, um, that does conclude uh, our very inexperienced rambling. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask now. If you don't, we will be outside uh, right at the door. Um, we've got some swag for some good questions because apparently I completely forgot to ask them during the presentation. Yes? Is there any like, um, expectation for like, work experience? Like, do you expect like, to have, um, have people work with Unity before and like, you know, especially at the C-sharp. C-sharp, yeah. Um, do you expect like proficiency with that or with that stuff that you could learn? So for the internship, right, that's, you can come in with no prior knowledge. That's the whole idea. We take you from the start right through the whole process. As for a job position, it really does help if you have. So what we, we've had happen before, and I would highly recommend it, is doing the internship, be done, and then we'll, and be like, this was cool, I'd like to apply for a position now. That, because now we know, okay, we've, we've been working with you now for, say, a month. Do you vibe, is it, because remember that cultural fit in a company is almost second, as, I almost want to say it's more important than your skill set at some points, because if you do not mesh with your colleagues, especially in a small team, I think we are like 17 people in the company, being a person is almost, as important, if not more so, than being a brilliant developer for us. Any other questions? Unless, uh, unless you have anything else. No? Oh, there you are. Yes. That is a good question. Now, if I, if memory serves, it was like between four and six. Um, that would for our June one. I think as. I believe, like I said, I think our December is full, but you can just pop a message, maybe a slot opens up, and, but then it's kind of like a first come first serve kind of deal. But yes? Uh, we've had second years before, so not, first years still a bit fresh. Um, <laughs> 
interesting choice of words. But yes, I think I am being shunted off of the uh, podium here. So thank you all for your time, and I'll see you outside. <laughs>